Hey there, Sam. Let's learn more about how we can manipulate strings and array in this lesson. And here's what we're going to build by the end of this lesson. So this website asks me to enter an email. If I purposefully enter a wrong email, it will tell me I'm missing something. And if I did include the symbols, it will tell me the email is valid. This program is built based on string and array manipulations. Let's dive into the code straight away. Suppose I have a string variable called hey, and I want to convert everything in it into lowercase. As we mentioned before, everything in JavaScript is an object, including our string here. We can convert it into lowercase by calling the to lowercase function. As you can see, both the i's are now in lowercase. Similarly, we can also convert the string into the uppercase by calling the to uppercase function. We can split a string into an array by calling the split function. The split function accepts an argument which represents the splitter. So if I pass in a space, that means I'll split the string by space. In other words, I'll split the string into an array of words. The slice function allows us to extract a portion of the string, and it is pretty much the same as the slice function in the array. So if I slice from index 0 to index 3, I'll get the first three characters of the string. If we want to get a specific character inside a string, we can use a char at function. So if I want to get a fourth character, I can pass in 4 inside the char at function, and that will give me m. And now let's talk more about array functions. We'll bring out our fruits array again. So we know that we can split a string into arrays. Now, if we want to join an array into a string, we can use the join function. And that is the total opposite of the split function. I can pass in a string to the join function to tell JavaScript that how the array should be glued together. So if I pass in a space, that means my fruits will be joined by a space. We can add new elements to an array by using the concat function. Unlike the push function that we introduced in the previous video, the concat function does not change the source array. It is a more preferable way to add new elements to an array because it's less likely to introduce bugs. So if I console out fruits, which is the source array, we're not seeing pineapple and papaya at the end of the array. Sometimes we want to check if an element exists inside an array. To do that, we can use the include function. So if I want to check if orange exists inside my fruits, I can do fruits.includes orange, and that will give me true. If I pass an orange here, however, it will give me false. We can check if every element inside an array passes a certain condition by using the every function. The every function accepts what we call a callback function as its argument. So the every function will go through every element in a fruits array and run a callback function for each element. And the argument in this function represents the value of each element in every iteration. And we should return the condition that we want to check in this function. For example, if I want to check whether every fruit has a length of less than 5, I can return fruit.length less than 5. The every function here will return false because orange has more than 5 characters. If I change 5 to 7, however, the every function will now return true because every element in fruit passes this condition. The for each function provides an alternative to the for loop. Similar to the every function, the for each function will also accept a callback function as its argument. And the argument will also represent the element in each iteration. So if I console out fruits, I will expect every fruit in the fruits array to be printed out in a console. The map function allows us to convert every element inside an array into something else. For example, if I want to convert every fruit into uppercase, I can call the map function. And just like the other functions, it also accepts a callback function. In the return statement, we'll put in the transformed element. In this case, we're just going to call the to uppercase function on the fruits because we want to transform every element into uppercase. So if I console out my map variable, I will expect an array of capitalized fruits. If we want to filter an array, we can use the filter function. Let's say I want to filter out all the fruits that has less than five characters. I can call the filter function. And again, it accepts a callback function. And in the return statement, we'll put down the filter condition. In this case, it will be fruit.length is less than 5. And now if I console out filtered, I'll get kiwi only, because that's the only fruit that has less than 5 characters. And now let's build our email checker. If you like a challenge, feel free to pause the video and see if you can build it yourself. All right, first thing first, we need a prompt to get the user input. So just prompt the question, enter your email, and store it to an answer variable. And now let's write down our plan before we start coding the rest. We need to define the mandatory symbols, in other words, the add symbol and the dot symbol. Once we've done that, we need to check whether the user input contains these characters. 
If not, we'll alert the user a message telling them to re-enter their email. Otherwise, tell them it's valid. Now the tricky bit is how we can check whether the user input has these symbols or not. So the goal here is to check if every character inside the must present array is included in the user input. See those keywords flashing on the screen right now? Pause the video and think about it for a minute before moving on. All right, I'm gonna review the answer now. Every element in a must present array should be included in the user input. So that means we need to call the every function on the must present array. And we somehow need to call the include function on the user input. But the user input is a string and the string does not have the include function. So we need to convert the string into an array first. We'll convert the user input into an array by calling the split function. And we'll split it by an empty string because we want an array of characters. Then inside the every callback function, we need to make sure every symbol is contained inside the user input or the splitted array. To do that, we can call the include function from the splitted array. The include function will return us a boolean value, which is perfect for the result of the every callback function. And we'll store the result of the every function as a variable called has valid characters. So again, just one more time, if I want to translate this section into English, it will read as every character inside the mass present array should be contained inside the split array. In other words, the user input. Next, for the if statement, if the user input does not have the valid symbol, remember exclamation mark means not. We will tell the user to include those symbols. Again, we can make use of the join function here. So joining all the mandatory symbols using the word and. Otherwise, we'll alert valid. Let's test our program and refresh. Enter wrong email and we get the alert message. Enter valid email and we get valid. And that's it. It takes a while to wrap your head around with these concepts. So rewatch the videos as necessary. Key takeaway for this lesson, string and array have powerful helper functions to help us manipulate data. Callback functions are just functions that pass on to another function. For example, we pass in the callback functions to the map functions and the filter function as their argument. That's it for now and I'll see you again shortly. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.